I have behind me a Dodge Dakota with a 5.9 liter Magnum V8 engine, 360 cubic inches. We purchased this a few weeks ago from Las Vegas, Nevada and drove it all the way down here to Tampa, Florida with a ticking sound. So I didn't know if it was gonna make the whole way, but somehow, some way, we drove this thing all the way down here. This is a Dodge Dakota RT, and it came with the 5.9 in it. So I documented the ticking noise, and we tried putting some additives, all that stuff. Didn't really seem to go away, but didn't really get any worse. If anything, it got a little bit less on the venture from Las Vegas down here to Florida. So what I wanna do is see if I can illustrate the ticking noise. It doesn't always make it. For some reason, when I moved it in here not too long ago, wasn't really making it until it got a little bit warmer. So I wanna pull the valve covers off, see if maybe we can see if maybe a lifter is not pumping up all the way. If it ends up being too much stuff, then I'm not gonna go down any rabbit holes. If it's not a issue that can be easily fixed, like if the engine needs to be completely rebuilt, I got a buddy that has a 5.9 that will end up just dropping into this thing. We're gonna fix it up and then uh, ultimately sell it most likely. So let me go ahead, start it up, see if I can show you guys the ticking and then we'll pull the valve covers and see what we can find. All right, so here we go with this. Let's start it up. Let's see. Right now she sounds good, but it's just when you rev it up and it's free spinning that you start hearing some sort of ticking. The fan's probably gonna be going crazy right now because we just started it, but let's we'll see if we can overcome that. I don't know if the camera fully picks it up, so let me insert a couple clips here where you can hear a little bit better from when we were driving it back. Okay, so let's try and get this the valve cover out of here now. Put a burn on our fingers off. All right, so I don't see anything too obvious. Only thing I can kind of maybe replicate is perhaps Oh, I'm going to turn this thing over, but these rockers, if you move them around a little bit, kind of get that kind of chatter out of them. More so this one than any of them. So that's just like side to side. So I don't know if maybe it's slapping around that way because I can't seem to get the other ones to really do that. I don't know if they're on the, if they're opening the valve and that's why they're a little more secure, but I don't see anything too obvious at the moment. I might uh, rotate it over, but I might as well pop off the other valve cover and see what we see on that one at the same time. Okay, so I threw the valve covers back on because the rockers seem to be functioning. I'm not sure if, uh, I might have to look up a little bit more. I'm not like a super expert on exactly how hydraulic lifters pump up non-adjustable rockers. So I don't see any that are blatantly slapping around. Everybody that's listened to this motor said like it sounds like it's coming from a little bit lower. Um, Clay Milliken also said he thinks maybe it sounds almost like a cracked flex plate. So um, I did just purchase a lift though. So I just put the covers back on. I wanna maybe put this thing up in the air. We'll see if it sounds more like it's coming from the bottom since we can actually get underneath this thing. Uh, I did notice it was throwing a code for EVAP. Previous owner changed the uh, canister, but I just noticed this has been leaking for a while. This hose is like a rock. And just with me moving around, it finished the deal. So it just snapped completely off. So at least now I know where that check engine light is coming from, from this EVAP hose just snapping right there so that'll be an easy fix and uh, then this thing will be code free because that was the only code this thing was throwing was just for the evap and uh it just uh resolved itself right here so now i know what it is so anyways that's the status on this right now and uh let's resume in a minute here well the best way to fix it boys is just to get another 5.9 engine right so here we go our buddy josh hooked us up with this so i have another engine and probably just gonna throw it into there and uh, maybe we'll figure out what's wrong with the 5.9 in the Dakota later. Okay, now we're gonna get the engine on to the lift so we can get this thing situated and out of my way. All right, so if you guys saw our last video, we ended up picking up a lift and the Dakota RT is now on that lift. So what I am going to do is, our buddy Clay Milliken said that 
He said it sounds kind of like maybe a cracked flex plate. I've never seen it before, but you never know if it was something that simple. That would be really cool. So I'm going to take off the inspection cover uh, in order to do that. It's just a few bolts, and we have to take off the starter motor. So let's take that off and uh, see what's going on in there. Some guys, um, you know, suggesting, even my buddy Steve was like, you know, you could take off the pan and uh, check for maybe some play in the rod bearings or something like that but only thing with this is in the dakotas i don't believe you can get the pan off without lifting the motor so there's not a whole lot of clearance here i don't think you can squeak this pan off unless you uh lift the motor up so that'd be a bigger job more than a job that i want to do today in this video but let's at least see if we can't find out anything let's take off the inspection cover who knows maybe we'll get lucky all right so we took off that inspection plate and I don't see anything that looks cracked on the flex plate, but I don't know if you guys can see that. It's got a purple torque converter in it. So I was told that this transmission was rebuilt at some point in time. Um, but what I'm finding is I checked all the bolts that hold the converter on, on the flex plate, the four that are there, they're all tight. But if I move the engine back and forth uh, from one of those bolts, I can hear like a clunk coming out of the converter. I don't know that that's normal talked to my buddy uh, Jason and he said that it shouldn't do that but that's where we're at so I'm gonna check one other thing um, like I said it doesn't look like we can take off this pan very easily without kind of lifting up the motor but he said that if a uh, rod bearing or something was going that you would see uh, one of the spark plugs that corresponding spark plug would be very rich because it would probably would be losing compression on that one cylinder so I'm going to put it back down, check the spark plug, see if I can see any indication of any specific cylinder. Um, after that, I'm probably going to have to get a buddy to help me, but fire it up and see if I can hear the noise coming from the transmission area or this oil pan while, you know, being underneath it and having it running. Okay, so she's back down on the ground. What I did just order was I ordered a boroscope, so we'll be able to go in through the oil pan and uh, check things out through there. I'm also gonna go pick up a can of seafoam. Might as well, why not? So, kinda gonna do a few things. We'll seafoam the crap out of it, see if it does anything. Then we'll drop the oil and uh, use the boroscope through the oil drain plug, see if we can see anything with the connecting rods. And I also am gonna go pick up a stethoscope. So we'll do all that in the next video of, of what the hell is wrong with this engine. But right now, let's go ahead and pull the plugs, see if we can see any differences. Maybe like if there's a hurt cylinder or something like that, we could pull the plugs, maybe run a compression test. So let's just go from there. All the plugs are removed and I really don't see any issues. I don't see any of them that are more or less black or any weird things going on with the plugs. But, and here's the other ones. They all look fairly decent. Nice little tan color on them. So what I'm gonna do now is I just went down, put the starter back on temporarily. You guys didn't miss anything there. And I'm gonna go ahead and run a compression test. So I got my compression gauge. I just pulled the fuel pump relay. So let's go ahead and crank this thing over on each cylinder and see what we got. There we go on the first one. Okay, it stopped moving, so let's check it out. That looks like pretty good compression. 160, 170. So, let's keep going. Okay, and I'm just going until it uh, stops moving here. 180 on that one. And the next one. About 160 on that. <laughs> 160 on this one as well. So far it's nothing too alarming. Let's see what's on the other side. Okay. One sixty. 
170. That one's a little lower for sure, 130. Here we go with the last one on the passenger side. So as lowest one was 130, the highest one was 170 or actually 180. So overall though, there's not like any cylinders that are completely interoperable. I mean, this engine is 23 years old at this point. So not too shabby. All right, well, that's gonna be a wrap for this video, you guys. Uh, stay tuned for part two of what the heck is wrong with this engine. I went through a bunch of stuff so far and can't really determine what it is exactly. I got some extra tools coming though, like I mentioned. We got a stethoscope and a boroscope, so we'll be doing all that stuff. I'm also gonna pick up some sea foam, see if uh, maybe it can restore some new life in this engine. I really don't know where the ticking is coming from, but I am starting to wonder if maybe that purple torque converter might be suspect because the sound seemed like it was coming from towards the back or deep within. Uh, who knows, right? Who really knows? And it only makes that sound when it's free loading so either an idle or you're just maintaining a constant speed if you're accelerating it goes away if you're off the gas it goes away so you never know so anyways we'll keep investigating keep going at it the compression overall seems okay there was one cylinder was a little bit low but nothing like too too uh, alarming but let me know what you guys think if you guys think you might know what it is comment down below give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys on the next video